right. Hit the mute. What's up, everybody? <clears throat> well, on the Hot Pudge Sunday, I'm your host, Pudge Fernandez. This is episode 16. Thank you to all the millions of people watching right now. Wink, wink. Happy to be here. Got a very special guest today. Want to put him on right now. You know how we do. We always start. We don't waste no time. I don't like talking up front. I like bringing the guests, especially special guests. All my guests are special. But every guest, everybody I bring up is special in a, in a different way. You know what I'm saying? It's always something personal uh, behind all the people that I bring up. And this, and this next guest is somebody I met when I first started uh, in the open mic scene. I was a little baby open micer. I didn't know shit from Shinola, as like they like to say. And I was just like waddling, making my way around the open mics. And, and here's this one guy with this distinctive voice, this sound, this, this style that nobody else has. Uh, it was very unique and I was drawn to it and then when I got to know him a little bit better He was a really 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 nice guy. He was probably one of the sweetest guys and I'll never forget He was like one of the first people to give me a compliment and that goes a long way in this business Because you know how we are we're all messed up in the head We got the self-doubt and we all think we suck and we most of us did and we did but it was pretty some special to hear especially because I looked up to him He was you know upper echelon. I was just starting out so to get a compliment was like real fucking cool. You know him, you love him. Very original, very special, very distinctive. The one and only Tim Warner, ladies and gentlemen. Tim Warner. Ow. Oh, here. Hold on, buddy. I got to do this. Look at right. you. We got we to make it look Instagram savvy. So there we go. What's up, man? Thanks for all the nice words, dude. Uh, oh, no. it's, very, uh, it's very kind of you. I appreciate that. No, absolutely, so man. I meant every word. I even got the orange on for you. I know orange. You're from Syracuse. Oh, dude, I should have worn my Knicks jersey. I didn't. I didn't realize. I wore. <laughs> uh, I got uh, Kevin. Kevin Garnett. I got you. I got you. I was actually by your way last weekend. I was driving through Syracuse on the way to Niagara Falls. Oh, good for you, man. So, you spent some yeah. time in Niagara Falls, did you? Yeah, we just shot up there for the weekend. We had to get out oh, of town. Great. It was like yeah. you know this this pandemic, the lockdown, the quarantine. We just uh, had to get a, take a breath. Take a break. All you had to do is just say other people, and <laughs> we would have gotten it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, shot up there, passed by Syracuse, and, yeah, I had a good time, man. I had a good time. Thought about you. I was like, I know a funny guy from Syracuse. Yeah, there's quite a few people, actually. Who else um, is from Syracuse? Like, you're the uh, only one I can I know, like, personally. No, nah, man. No, actually, uh, Moody McCarthy. Okay. All uh, right. He's from Syracuse. Uh, Jesse May Peluso. Is Whoa, from Syracuse. Jesse May. Okay, I remember Jesse. Yeah, dude, we used to we used to work at uh, the same H uh, and M. We worked in the children's department at Get the uh, fuck Great. Out. Yeah, at Great Northern Mall. Um, yeah, it's like in Clay. It's like between Syracuse and Fulton. For anyone who needs some kind of Google Map reference. Oh wow. Um, who else? Small world. Um, Steve, uh, Steven Rogers. Is uh, from Syracuse. All right. I don't think I worked with him. Uh, oh, he, uh, I don't know. He just, no one watches, but he just did like, um, I don't know, Colbert or something. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? One of, one uh, of those guys that are still on and no one's fucking paying attention to. Yeah. I hear you. It's a whole new world, man. This is it. This is, it's all about That's the social it. media technology. And, and this is why I'm doing this, man. It's like 14 years in comedy. You know, I love the craft, I love the writing, I love the stage, but I fell behind on the technology, so I'm playing catch up right now. No, dude, it, yeah. it does. There is, dude, first of all, there is no catch up uh, right now. It, it pretty much is the Wild West. Yeah. So okay. it's like, so it's like, you know, honestly, dude, first of all, you got, you know, I don't mean to be Shark Tank on you, but it's kind of like how I'm looking at everything that I'm doing, dude. I mean, if you look at, if you look at everything I've been doing in the last two weeks, dude, it's yeah. fucking Shark Tank esque. So, like, what, you know, again, Hot, hot Pudge Sunday, dude. That's fantastic. That is a <laughs> great you. title. You know, next step, dude, logo. You got to get a fucking dope logo. I, I, that's I'm on Pudge. It. Like, that's you and a Sunday. And it's also on Sundays and yada, yada. Like, yeah. it's all. So, you're, 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 you're moving in the right direction. Yep. And now the next step, honestly, dude, is just consistency. Because there's so many people that are, are just. A lot of people don't start. That's the biggest issue. First step is starting. That's the first step. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
a lot of a lot of people uh, concern themselves with with perfection, and and it's like, dude, just create shit. The perfection will come. Like how I started my podcast to what it is now. I did not have any of those thoughts when when I first started, and now it, it's just. It, you know, it's like everything evolves. That's why I don't like, you know, I kind of met, made a little eh, whatever. But like this new normal. Dude, there's no such thing. If you've lived life, everything changes. Everything transitions. There's no new normal. This is just life. Remember, like we're two, we're two kids that were alive before the internet, right? We know life before the internet. We know life after. That whole thing was for, oh, the new normal. You can go on the internet and look at naked pictures of girls. And guess what? It's, it's fucking fine. There's no new normal. Everything it's just is, an evolution. Is, is normal. Evolution. Evo- well, I don't know if it's evo- evolution because yeah. evolution is kind of an up climb, but it, there's definitely change. Yes. yes. <laughs> you know? And, um, uh, yeah, so, like, I, I forgot what I was talking about, but, like, uh, you, what you're doing – Oh, uh, just create, and then it, or- yeah. it organically uh, will just manifest into something as long as you allow Absolutely. yourself to keep an open mind with, because, again, you're just creating. Everything yeah. starts with an idea. All of it's imagination. All of it starts with this. Everything you, you, starts with zero. Everything begins with zero. It starts with one. You hit the nail on the head. The first thing you got to yes. do, and a lot of people is, fair, is starting. The first step is to start and take the first step. And what I learned is after you take the first step, you got to continue to step, create content. You got to con- see, like you said, a lot of people have started and they, they weren't consistent. You told me, and I agree because I already re- looked into this, consistency of the content, fluidity. You got to yep. continue. And just like comedy on stage with this new era of technology, what we're doing with podcasts and lives, we can't be afraid to <laughs> fail. We can't be afraid to fail. And I think that's, Back. I mean, that was a big also, obstacle for me because I failed. Also, I'm, I'm failing. Yeah. Also, may I say, be scared to succeed as well, my friend. You said that's a good thing? <laughs> because, no, no, I'm saying, you know, you said fear of failure. And right. I, I would also like to add to that the fear oh. of success. Fear of success. Yes, that goes both you know, ways. Because, because right now, dude, look at, you know, I don't mean this in a derogatory way, and you know that. Dude, there's two people watching. I think one of them's me. You know, maybe the other one's you. Uh, we're allowed to just do it kind of ever right now. Right. There's no expectations. There's no fucking pressure. There's no, we're just being people. And then when you get successful, then it's like all of a sudden, you know, now it's like, well, he wasn't as good as that last joke or that last special right. or that last podcast. You know, um, a lot of people are afraid of that number. Yeah. But you, like, like you said, the, the, there's only two people technically. But like I brought up before, that's two today. That two is yeah. going to be 2,000 later on. It's all a matter. I mean, this is the beginning. That, that yeah, two dude, doesn't you... represent who I am. That two doesn't represent who you are. But in six months, maybe a year or two, that two is going to be 2,000 because it's going to go into a channel. It, I'm going to continue to move forward. You're going to move forward. And this is, and this, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go on my YouTube channel. And eventually when I learn, it's going to get edited. There's going to be an intro. There's so much, it's going to be so much improvement. It's like you said, it's not going it, to, it, you know, I got to start, but you got to, can't be afraid to fail and learn. And it's just improvement after improvement after improvement. I can, like, I love that number two. I love that number two. I hope it is just me and you. And then in a couple of years, it's going to be 2,000. It's going to be clips. Uh, probably, I, I mean, look. But it's, it's probably not going to be, uh, to be honest with you. And it, and it, and it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. You know, just put some hashtags on it. You put it out there, and that's it. Who yeah. cares? Um, I'm starting to notice this, right? I'm like, uh, I don't know, I'm like 40 pages, 45 pages into uh, my podcast. And I've noticed around 40 uh, impression, like, to click-through ratio. I mean, granted, you know, before it was like literally nothing, like 0.1 or 0.2. And now it's like my latest video, right? 5.1. And uh, it's just those, those yeah. little things. You know, last month, dude, it was fucking uh, 2.8. The month before, 3.2. And it's just like 
it, it, it's 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 those it's those little things. Like what are the, if I could? Yeah, I'm gonna toot my horn. I don't give a fuck. I, I also got to kind of plug in a way. But it's like, look, my podcast, The Joker and the Rye, right? It's really it's all about that idea of you know it takes ten years to make it overnight, but you always hear about those stories after the fact when they've already made it, and it's kind of like, well, ha ha, fuck that person, or you know, uh, whatever. Like, oh, they didn't believe in me. Ha, ah, look at me now, and and. I wanted to kind of have something that was like in the moment where it's like, no, this is, here's the, here's some of the tears. Here's some of the frustration. Here's some of the joy. Here's, you know what I mean? Like all of it as is, you know, and the great thing is like one thing I said during the podcast, cause it basically started again, the Joker and the rye. Uh, it started with the idea that like I was going to quit drinking and I was going to make that a podcast. And then I relapsed. And then I didn't do it for six months. And then I stopped drinking again. And then now I've been doing it. And now I'm coming on a year. And, like, now I'm doing it every week. And now I'm on Patreon. And now I've got my first tier episodes, which are different than the other uh, episode, where it's just me playing guitar and, like, talking tales and stories and optimism and whatever else. Uh, And then the third one, the other tier – uh, which is going to start in August, it's me doing interviews with people. And it's like three different channels of me. And then there's people that can go and support and, and contribute a monthly thing, whatever else. And it's like, that's how you can build an audience. You can kill a middleman. You can fucking, I mean, it, it, there's yep. so many options and things right now. Like every, I don't know what it is, dude. I don't know what it is about me per se, but once there was that kind of, you know, when that haze kind of came into New York where they didn't really shut shit down, but it's like people started staying in a little bit and you could tell that like, all right, dude, how are they going to shut this city? Like, okay. Like right from there, um, I just kind of, I don't know what it is, but I've just, I've seen nothing, but I don't want to say the bright side, but I've seen nothing but the anecdotes. I've seen nothing but solutions. And even when I've been hit in the face with loss or I've been hit in the face with, you know, just, you know, economical things, financial things, uh, uh, personal, uh, life, death things. And it's like I've still found the solution in the anecdote. And it's, um, and it's pretty insane to be, and again, sorry, I'm also reflective in my life, so forgive me because it's like, what is it, less than three weeks since, like, since a year since I've had a drink. And it's like, wow. dude, I'm going to be in Boise. I'm going to be in Boise, Idaho, headlining. I don't know what the circumstances are going to be per se. I know they can do 50 people. Right now, Idaho had to do mandatory masks uh, for now till whenever they stop doing okay. it. But people could come in. People could sit down and so forth. I think they could do a max of 50. But I got five shows, uh, Thursday, Friday, nice. Saturday. And, um, Which states? Which states? July uh, 23rd, 24th, to 25th. And Sweet. the 24th is my one-year celebration. It is just absolutely insane um, to one be year. thinking that. Yeah, and I'm okay. going to be in Idaho, you know. And, like, again, you know, yeah, I'm smoking some weed, whatever else. I'm probably going to eat mushrooms that Sunday. But um, uh, after the sets, whatever else. But uh, it's – I am so fucking amped. For this next phase, this whatever people think is the new normal, dude. I, I can't even begin to tell you. Like, I honestly, dude, I, it depends on Idaho. I'll tell you this right now. Here, I'll tell you this. Fuck it. Uh, it depends on Idaho, right? One, if my 21 grams, my fucking soul feels righteous out there, okay? Uh, and the sets go well. Granted, I'm going to be rusty. There's going to be things. I'm not going to be too hard on myself, but more of audience. If, if there's that connection and so forth, then I am coming back here, dude. I'm taking out a fucking loan. I'm getting a car and I'm going. Oh, that you can perform in North Carolina. Boom. I know motherfuckers in Charlotte. Let's go. I know people in Raleigh. I know people in Asheville. I know people in Wilmington. Let's go, dude. And I'll just fucking be on the road for a year and then maybe end up in Denver and, and just grow the Patreon, grow the things. I got the shirts coming. It's just like, dude, this is fucking, it's all, again, life is all in how you look at it. Sorry I'm just yelling and ranting, but it's just, uh, 
I, I know everyone's fucking frustrated and angry and then and but it's like, dude, you could tell the people that been doing shit during the quarantine now as we're all coming out of our caves and the people who have it. Right. And it's just like, who's been making their house out of straw, my friend? Who's been making their house out of bricks? And it's it's fascinating to see, dude. And I know because of my past, um, like, it, my resume ain't the greatest, dude. I've fucked up a bunch of times. And, and, and the people, in the, in, the, in the image that people picture of me, which is my fault, my responsibility, uh, is the one before quarantine and not this gentleman you see here. And it's just great because it's like underestimate me. It's Lincoln Hawk time. I'm going to put fucking money down on myself. I'm going to turn my hat backwards, dude, and we're just going to fucking do this. No, I'm, Straight up, man. Dude, I'm excited. Like, I feel like this corona, this little pandemic, I mean, God All bless. God bless. I mean, and, and my condolences. Pandemic, to the BLM, fucking Trump, oh, every, the masks, everything. It's, uh, it's a it's, perfect uh, storm. It's a perfect storm, and I can't wait for the other side. I feel like there's going to be a big, like, it's going to be Darwinism of comedy come this fall. Because like you said, who, who made their house made of straws and who made their house made out of bricks? We will find out this fall. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. Because it's like, what? Because this, this time out, it just, it's, it just broke everybody even. Does, it doesn't matter See, who. It's not a timeout, dude. It's halftime. Half. There's a difference. There's a difference. You're but given it, that time. You're given that time, and now you got to come up with a strategy after the first. You know what I'm saying? Where a timeout, it's something that you make, where it's different. You're always you're granted a halftime, and then it's what you do with that halftime. Do you still run the fucking ball even though it hasn't worked, or do you start? The, do you start maybe trying to do some fake uh, play actions? Who's changing the plays? Who's calling the plays? Who's going to stick to the plan, the old plan? Who's going to adjust for the second half? Who is adjusting well, had, to the second half? Well, when I stopped, I think when I stopped uh, boozing, dude, it's like I got a new owner and a new GM. And then, like, three, six months in, I got a new head coach, and then I started making roster cuts. And granted, I got rid of some fucking high-priced talent, dude, where people looked at me and they're like, why would you get rid of that girl? Why would you get rid of that guy? And it's just like you don't understand. Locker room shit. You can look at their numbers all you want. Locker yeah. room shit. And it's like you got to make those hard decisions. And now the people that have been coming into my life that have been getting on my roster, it's either the universe has been giving me it or, like, I've been meeting them. But either way, it's just, again, it all is up here. You want, Dude, you want to know why this is going to work? Because up here. I, it's just, it's going to work. I'm going right. to get Patreon people. I'm going to get people to support me. And I'm going to literally just be performing for them for the rest of my life. Like it's, if you've got something, it's going to work. And I think I, I can at least spark interest from people. I totally agree with you as far as the sobriety. <clears throat> about, uh, I've been sober myself. I, uh, I just made three years sober this year, this past spring. You, are you completely? Yeah. Yeah, I uh, congratulations, I checked, dude. Yeah, I checked in. I checked into a uh, intake at the VA three years ago. Actually, 2017 Easter Sunday. Two wow. Easter Sunday was my last drink. The next morning, I checked into the VA. I did intake for about three three nights, and then I went to a, a program. Was and, that like a detox? Yeah, detox. Yeah, it was a okay. detox. Okay, okay. So they have to watch you and. Your yeah, yeah, in case you don't fucking yeah. start swallowing your tongue and yeah. shit. Yeah, that was, yo, I didn't... Having I had, convulsions I, without alcohol. I had no idea. Uh, when they told me I'm going to be there three, four, five nights, I was like, cool. I got my books, my pens, my deodorant. My, and then when nah, I get dude. there, it goes, give me your bat. And they start taking everything. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. You can't have this. You can't have this. Yep. This, this, your deodorant has alcohol in it. And I'm like, what the fuck? And there's like... Oh, these are, <laughs> I've watched, I've watched interventions where people fucking they'll they'll booze hound on mouthwash yes. and uh and 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 uh, uh sanitizer. Yes. Fucking sanitizer, I've seen, dude. I've seen it. They removed the sanitizers. They removed the sanitizers in yeah, our dormitory. Uh they basically the doors off the bathroom. They can watch you if they want. You know what I'm saying? But it was Oh yeah. Total lockdown, very little privacy. Um thank God I wasn't I didn't flip out or anything. I was more claustrophobic. I wasn't tripping or fiending. 
If anything, I was claustrophobic from being locked in with no fresh air. I think that was what, but I kept myself and I got out of there. Then they put me up in a program and I've been taking classes. I got anger management. I got therapy and I got a group that I go to. Oh, every so you week. got therapy. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's where it started. And you got, and you got a group thing. Yeah. Yeah. So by the way, it's haunt real quick. Aaron, Aaron, bionic girl. I see you. So keep writing your comments. I'm going to look at them later. Okay. Keep it coming. Yeah. So it, when, once I got out slowly, but surely you get clarity, you get clarity. And the one thing that I, I wanted to have that I lost, and this is not only life, but on stage, is command and control. I need to have command. It's just, just like on stage, you have to have command and control of the crowd and what you're doing and your delivery, and also in life. And under, the, under alcohol, inside, living inside the bottle, I didn't have that. But over yeah, time... It's like, uh, you you got to be your own good quarterback. You got to be your own good point guard. Like it yeah. starts there. And if, and yeah. if, you know, if that first domino is a little shaky, dude, then the rest are going to be shaky and not in the way that you want, you know, it's yeah. going to fall to the side where the other dominoes are. And it's just like, well, that was fucking pointless setting all that up for what? Yeah. You know, so I could just get loaded and have the domino fall the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, it's, totally. uh, I, I agree with you. I felt like, you know, and it's an ongoing process still, and it's always going to be, but, like, even this last year, like, I would say every three months, like, every quarter, I called it, like, it's like an emotional earthquake uh, where, like, I feel like your spirit and emotions just kind of, like, they shift, you know? And, you know, depending on, I think, how you've been for those three months, whether it's, like, a negative shift or, you know, uh, a positive shift. It really is perspective, but I just feel like there's these kind of platonic emotional things, you know, that I can really feel. Um, and it's like every, and I feel one coming on now, you the know, energy, your the, point. the energy, the yeah. energy, the energy yeah. and the cutting out of people and the realization yeah. that you need to cut ties with certain people, certain groups. Some well, of that, them that's, that's why I think, uh, you know, I was walking around here, uh, walking around Manhattan on Mother's Day, right? And it was fucking dead, dude. There's like hardly any people. And uh, it's beautiful, dude. Like the city's yours, you know? And uh, I just thought to myself how much I've changed, not even just in 2020, but like in uh, uh, since I stopped drinking. And I kind of thought, you know, it's, it's been pretty drastic, dude. You'd be surprised. And... I was thinking, like, well, maybe my environment needs a fucking drastic change. And then, um, I don't know, the longer that this pandemic has gone on and whatever else, and then again, just, like, seeing things in Idaho and, and who knows what that could bring. And, like, I don't know. It's um, The possibilities are there, man. The possibilities. But I've always dreamed of, but I've always dreamed of that, Pudge. Like, the idea of, like, I don't know, there's something about the road and just like, all right, I'm in Idaho, next stop, you know, uh, I don't know, Butte, Montana, here we go. And, you know, like I did some triple runs in, Se in Seattle when I was there for yeah, like Yeah, I know, remember you left year. for Seattle. Yeah. Yeah, dude. And they got like, you know, these shows in like fucking Pullman, Washington and like Walla Walla and like northern <laughs> Idaho and shit. And they're all like these fucking VFWs and like these these strip mall bars it's like half bar half pizza shop they're fucking you know it's like a hundred bucks you and someone else split in half an hour it's fucking yeah. horrendous uh but they're great but no. it, it's it's it, they're but it's it's fucking horrendous uh but it's there's something about that that just it wets my whistle more than you know, and no, I'm not even going to say a comedy club because it doesn't matter. But seeing like, to me, it's like seeing Chappelle at a comedy club in New York for 20 minutes. Like you get, you know how we can get those opportunities yeah, for say, yeah. you know, see him yeah. working on shit, which, which is very yeah. valuable. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But dude, what really like gives me a comedic boner is just that like, it's me, the road and let's build an audience. Let's, you know, it, 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 it's like Tyson you know, coming up, or it's like no socks, no gloves, like yeah. what Colin Quinn says, yeah. a comedian, 
you know, where he just talks about like comedy and Tyson. And it's just yeah. like, it, it's such a great analogy and he's so dead on. He's so right. It's, it's just, By the yeah. way, Zarin, I didn't mean you could stop commenting. Please keep it up. I was just going to read them later. That's no, all. I to- I mean, I'm intrigued with the conversation. I, t- I totally agree. I mean, I, I mean, what road I did, I do go on. Uh, I used I go to Kentucky. I was at going to Kentucky a couple of times a year uh, to perform at the Caravan. And let me tell you, those five shows that time in Kentucky, I just I I, I love being by myself. You know, I love being in the room by myself. I love yeah. getting my thoughts together. I love yeah. like there's no distractions. There's no New York. There's no family. Uh, I love I love them judging me before I go up and then like. You know, a minute, two minutes in, like flipping their judgments and right. so forth. Like all of the, like I love it. I love it. You know, having I can't wait to see what this fucking stupid haircut, whatever else in in Idaho. You know what they're gonna think before I go up. You know, and uh, I I just I I love I to me that that's the stories. Like we grew up the same era, dude. We were spoiled. When it came to art and creativity, we were fucking spoiled, Pudge. Like, comedy was on every goddamn channel, dude. Fucking yeah. music. Music was everywhere. And not only was music everywhere, dude, we had, not only did we have, like, that fucking infusion of grunge, we also had the year of hip-hop in 94. Like, we were fucking spoiled, bro. Independent movies, you know, that became fucking mainstream but your reservoir dogs and your fucking boogie nights and all that shit we were we were so spoiled and we saw like you know for example i love guns and roses i love dave matthews band uh i love public enemy dude road dogs you know what i'm saying like the comics i love bill hicks carlin fucking coming up dude road dogs they took their shit and just fucking moved and said fuck it and also dude you were saying in the beginning the times have changed dude i hate to say this New York ain't the fucking city that it once was. It ain't top two when it comes to fucking entertainment. It don't no. matter anymore. These little cell phones and technology and all this shit has fucking dropped down the fucking importance of L.A. and New York. That's why you can see Atlanta and Sacramento, Detroit, Chicago. You know, these places fucking popping up and having yep. little scenes, man, yep. because of things like this and what we're fucking doing, man. You know... I love New York, but New York, there's an arrogance to this city where they think it's the fucking greatest. And I think it's because you can't look up and see the stars and realize how fucking small you are. And I wish for one night they would turn out Times Square over here and fucking let us see the stars and just go, oh, no shit, dude. We're not that big of a deal. I tell you, one of the greatest memories I have uh, when I was a young man in the military after I left New York was seeing stars. I, w- I was in the Mojave Desert, and I saw, I saw stars like I've never seen them before. And it was, a, it was just this clicking moment. All these years in New York City, like the greatest city in the world, and here I am in the desert looking up, and I can see the Big Dipper. I can see the Little Dipper. Right. Like, I, it used to be just a picture in my textbook. It didn't mean anything. It was, right, right. It was just a picture in a textbook in high school. And now I'm yeah. seeing it for real. That it's uh, the, the as big as New York is. We live in a bubble. Yeah, we live in a bubble. I get very excited when I see like Orion's belt. I just think I, Orion. I just think it's fucking awesome. I, I think it's so awesome that people laid around in whatever a meadow, a fucking gravel, whatever the fucking they did, and you know they did some kind of drugs or they at least spun around till they got dizzy and they looked up at the fucking stars, dude, and were like, "Yo, that right there." That's fucking this warrior Orion. Oh, tell me about Orion. All right, man. It's like the aristocrats. Each constellation was like an aristocrats joke, you know, where you just, you knew the point, but you kind of improv all of it, do it around the fire before the bears came and fucked up the party. I'm telling you, more people, I, I, I feel like, I think that's the problem with America. There's too many bubbles. I think more New Yorkers have to leave and more outside people need to come here. And, and, well, and you, I mean, it's the way, you know, just there's, there's very well, lack of understanding. There's too much lack of empathy. There's lack of respect. There's all these bubbles and division. And I think, like I said, more people need to leave New York and see, see what's out there. 
and more people in the country need to come here and see what we have, what they don't have. That's the problem. Yeah, I don't, so many- I, I don't disagree with you at all, but I think one of the biggest issues uh, and also kind of a double-edged sword with all of this is as much as I'm talking about the beauty, you know, now here's the fucking genital ward of it all. And it's, you know, the issue is, and it's not anyone's, it's not our fault, Pudge, but it's like a lot of people think their algorithm is their fucking world. And it's just a fraction of the world. But, but what happens is at times like this where, where opinions and so forth and everything are heightened, it's just been like, for example, due to the last five years, let's say, me and you, we've gone about our lives, right? We show this video. Ah, there's a link. We put up this picture. We write this post. Um, I don't know. Here's a picture of some food, right? Uh, here's, here's a dog doing something stupid. All uh, right, look at, look at this is my nephew, right? And that's all we've been doing. But behind the scenes... They've been doing an algorithm, and they've been going, oh, well, you went to Hawaii once. You know what? You should see more of this person's posts because they went to Hawaii a couple times. And then, oh, yeah, you like Qatar. You like Guns N' Roses. So does this person. So you're going to see their posts a little bit more. And and all of this, right? And we're all just going about our lives. And then all of a sudden, one of the people that they really like Guns N' Roses, all of a sudden, they're like, ah, dude, Trump's the greatest human being of all time. You're like, what? Wait a minute. (laughs) Not everyone thinks that. And then then it's, you know, and then all of a sudden everyone thinks like, oh, what's happening on my algorithm here? That's what everyone's fucking talking about. So that's what I'm going to take a stance on, which is only what, what, one percent, half a percent. I think I think less people than that have died from the covid are, are in your our algorithms. And, and that's what we're basing a lot of our judgments on, that 0.3, 0.4% of people's opinions, and then we're declaring it everybody's opinions. Someone puts up a fucking video, dude. You could put certain words before it or after it, and you've got either CNN telling the story or Fox telling the story, and it's the same goddamn video, dude. It's, I think, I, I think, yeah, yeah. It's like everybody, it's like, in a political sense, if if I say something that sounds left, they assume I'm left. And if I say something that it's right, they assume I'm right. Why do I have to be either or? or? Why Dude, there's do, so much gray. Why do you? I'm independent. I'm a registered independent for the record. But there's I'm so a many. Libertarian. Yeah. But why do I have to be either or? I've had people judge me because it's like, that's it. No, that's not it. There's more than that. This, you, you say this or that. No, it's, it's a lot of gray. Uh, you know, yeah. it, it, it's, uh, it's like it, it's, it's the algorithm. You're the algorithm. Uh, you're either pro or, or, or against. You're either for or not. That's it. I'll tell you, and if you, I'll tell you, if you walk the line, and if you walk the line, they just, they're, they're dumbfounded. They're just dumbfounded I, and they're looking I at agree. you like, what are, like, I, I put, I posted, I put up not political posts, but more like, I, I, just like I said, I walk the line. I won't be pro or against. I'll, be, I'll either bash both or, or, or congratulate both or find, or find some kind of happy medium, and I, yeah. I, get, I, I get nothing. Yeah. It's well, just. I'll, I'll tell you this. This is, again, this is also kind of a promotion, but also kind of a relevant story. Uh, my podcast I'm finishing up after I get done here. I got to finish up editing for tonight at midnight on Patreon. Uh, but it's, um, I went down to Chaz. New York city has a Chaz. I don't know if you know, like Seattle, a chop. Have you heard of this? Is uh, the autonomous zone. Have you heard of this? Hello? Bye. Yeah, Tim, you're coming in broken. Bye. You're well, breaking up. Moved. There you go. Did How's you move? That? No. Sorry. Autonomous zone. Have you heard of it? There you go. Oh, I got you back. Okay. Autonomous zone. Have you heard of it? Uh, I can hear you a little bit, but your, your screen is frozen. I had the same thing happen last week. That's there fine, you go. Dude. There you go. There, all right. There you go. There the, you go. There I was, go. All right. Autonomous zone. Have you heard anything about it? In Seattle? Say it again? No. Autonomous zone. No. 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 So... There's a bunch of people that closed off like six, seven blocks of Seattle and they took over City Hall. And they were basically running that six, seven blocks. There's no police. Oh, okay. They're yes, their own I think, police. I think, yes, yeah, I think I know. Yes, I think I heard. Yes. Okay. 
All right. Well, they came in, I think, July 1st, and uh, cops came in, whatever, and they dismantled, you know, Chaz, Chop, whatever, in Seattle. Well, they have one in uh, New York City, right behind City Hall. And it's insane. It's not insane, dude. It's insane in the sense of, like, it looks like City Hall looks like the alternative 1985 in Back to the Future when Biff Tannen was mayor. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> but, like, I, dude, it's spray painted. Yeah. It's fucking, there's a, dude, there's a group down there, man, and they're doing a fucking New York City chass chop, right? So I went down to check out some shit. And while I'm down there, the naked cowboy decides to come down. Play Get his the guitar. fuck out. He went down right. there. Well, dude, there's no one in Times Square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why yeah. would it? Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he's trying to do a PR stunt, whatever. I, I get it, right? So, but the thing is, his guitar has got Trump bumper stickers fucking laid out all over the motherfucker. Get the fuck right? out. Oh, I didn't know. Right. So, but here's the thing, dude. It's an autonomous zone. So it's like that thought is allowed, okay? Like being a Trump supporter, being a Biden sure. supporter, that's fine. The, the other issues at hand is the core thing, right? So uh, stupid fucking naked cowboy decides he's going to cross the street. He's going to play his music, you know, whatever, like, hey, mama, I don't let your babies grow up to be cowboy, whatever the fuck he does. And then yeah. and, and, and right outside the autonomous zone, and, of course, these dudes start coming over, and they're like, yo, motherfucker, fuck you. You can't come in here. We're not going to allow you to come in here. Uh, you're just doing a PR stunt. And then it gets to a point where they're yelling at them in the middle of the street, dude. Wow. Which is now there's a bunch of people filming. And, by the way, it's the whole time there are cops surrounding this whole area behind City Hall. Literally. Uh, just do, 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 cop, 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 cop. Not doing a fucking thing, my friend. Almost as if they were, like being told to stand down they're not they're laughing if anything bro all of them just watching all of this right so they're mill street now people all the karens and the beckys and the chads and the todds they got their cameras out they're fucking filming and whatever else and they're just yelling at them and now again they're like dude you're trying to do a pr stunt but now what you guys are doing is making more of attention than him just fucking playing his guitar on the goddamn corner of your fucking autonomous zone. And they got fences up, and they wouldn't let him in, and they fucking yelled at him until he got across the fucking street. They basically verbally pushed him across the street. All of this is fine. It's all of it allowed. It's America. Wow. But this is why I bring it up, is because here's what I see happening. Everybody, and this is the example, everybody is using the same tactics, but with different intentions. Those people down there, in my opinion, while I watch that, and it's going to be in my podcast, you can see the whole interaction. Uh, but as I watch that, to me, that was like how Trump treats illegal immigrants. Put up a wall. Don't fucking come in. We don't like what you have to say. The same tactics, Hypocrisy. different intentions. The and irony. they both... Yes, and both sides think they're coming from a good place. And right. it's the same with the mask and the no mask. It's the same with BLM and white supremacy. It's the same with Trump and um, fucking uh, Biden or whatever, or Kanye, whoever's going to jump into the fucking mix at this point. Yeah, I heard um, Kanye. Yeah, well, whatever, dude. I don't know if he's done the paperwork or anything like that, but uh, I think it's more. It's, I think I think he's doing it more to take the black vote away from Biden, so Trump gets another four years. It's scary. That's it's my scary. Opinion. It's scary. I, I like. I like. I like what you're saying. Yeah, it's two sides. They th they both think they're right. Uh, I think they're both extreme, and, and they're both using the same methods, though. That's and the it, thing. And hypocrisy. Yes. Everyone. Yeah. What I see is this. I see not everyone, but I see a lot of people becoming what they're railing against and not even knowing it. I what can't I wait see, to do comedy, dude. What I oh. see, what I see, what I see, it annoys me. I see two absolutes. I see two absolutes, two sides that believe in this absolute, but I don't see compromise. And that's where we're fucked. 
There's no compromise. Not one. Pr I've never seen somebody from the left or the right say, hey, let's compromise. It's either my way and not their way. No, it's my way, not their way. We're right. They're wrong. Vice versa. Like you said, same tactics, both sides. Well, I think I think I I, I, I here's where I it's disagree. It's so with it. absolute. And I and I hate it. Where's the compromise? Because it's a relationship. Well, uh, here's the thing, though, dude. I, here's where I disagree with you. I have seen compromises, and I can give you examples. When they're doing budget things or when they're coming up with a heroes act, instead of screwing the poor people by two cents, they do it by 1.7. That's the compromise <laughs> that they make okay. all the time, okay. dude. Like, the yeah, thing is, right. again, I did a, I did a podcast a, a few pages ago, right? Page 39. It's called the Democratic Party. And of course, Democratic at the end has three Ks. And it was right when uh, BLM, like the, the, I don't want to say riots, but the fucking, when the Protesters. looting was happening yeah. along with the protests. Okay. Well, it's at that time because there's still protests now. Yeah. But like when the looting was happening yeah. with the protests. Right. Uh, so I was like, all right, dude, everyone, again, everyone's yelling at each other. So it's like, I, I want to come up with a solution instead of addressing the problems. Like, again, you know me, dude, I've been doing comedy about this shit for years. You know, like Christopher Columbus being a thing too. I was doing shit like that five years, whatever else, dude, it's insane. And now everyone's catching up. It's great. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me, but sorry, the thing what was I talking about quick. Sorry. I got sidetracked. I saw something over in the thing. No, I was talking high. The, there's no compromise. You gave me an example of compromise. Oh, the Democratic Party. Yeah, so I was looking for a solution, right? right solution. Like, what's the solution to BLM and so forth? What can we do, right? Because end racism and so forth. Well, white right. supremacy seems to be the problem. All right, so let me look into white supremacy because, believe it or not, as a white guy, I don't know a lot about it, dude. It's like, it's like gay porn. I know it exists. I just never looked into it. Not my cup of tea. So oh, I started yeah. looking into white fucking supremacy i did a whole episode dude you should check it out it's like fucking 55 minutes where basically dude the democratic party and some former members of the Whig party i can't say that they founded the kkk but they definitely funded and encouraged uh it happening in the beginning the republican party was basically a black party dude they were 90% black when they had their first fucking uh, uh, Republican convention, I believe, in 1867, dude. It was like 155 members were black, 20 were Anglos. So then the Democrats, since you, now you started having fucking Republicans, white granted, in, in uh, politics and so forth, the KKK, you also had the White League and the Red Shirts. These were paramilitia groups that were used basically to scare black people from meeting, from voting, from talking, from having plans. They would murder, disrupt, and torture, all for the political gain of Democrats. And then people say to me, well, Tim, somewhere along the way, the sides changed. Yeah. And it's sorry to tell you, sorry to tell you, wherever you think that happened, that's where the sides came together and shook hands and became one. There was no fucking changing of sides. None of that. None of that. Both sides are fucking racist. Both sides could care less about any one of us whatsoever, whether we get COVID or we don't, whether we're white or we're black. The only thing they fucking care about is if we're a goddamn billionaire or if we're not. And if we are a billionaire, are we going to fuck a kid or jack one off or kill one in front of all the other billionaires in order to be in their club and help rule the world. And if not, they'll fucking shame you and kill you. And if this girl, uh, uh, Epstein's chick, gets yeah. to fucking talk, it's going to be fascinating to hear about all these kid fuckers will she, will she in make Hollywood it? and in will politics. She make it? Will she make it? Will she make I it? Don't, I don't know, dude. I heard, I don't know if this is true. I got to look a little more. But, dude, I heard they're fucking sending her to the same fucking prison as Epstein. I'm being dead serious. Everyone's that's predicting. not like a... Everyone's predicting it. We'll see, dude. We'll they're see. I, 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 Pudge, I, I don't see how she lives. If she drops names, it, it, they're going to they're gonna be fodder. Those names are going to be like, you can let them go. The it's big names, the question, I don't know. It's going to be interesting, dude.
It's going to be, I mean, we can, I mean, we all agree something's going to happen. We can, it's just a matter of how. Are they going to put her on a plane that's mysteriously going to crash? Is she going to, is she going to be in a car accident? Yeah, they're going to do it. They're going to do it, Kobe. Yeah. Oh, is she going to, is she going to hang herself because of the pressure with the suicide note? You know, it's like. You know, and and the thing is, you know, I find kind of humorous. It's like people, people will have, because here's my thing, dude, you know. I, I, I the whole time I I believe COVID is a real virus. The thing I've questioned the whole time is its potency, if you will. Uh, and I've understood people have died, and I've questioned it, and I've gotten some backlash or whatever else that happens. You know what I mean? But you know what I find funny? The same people that will believe the Epstein thing will mock someone like me about COVID. Uh, and I'll even bring it home and make it hit home a little bit more. Remember when uh, there was the racist website and then like Al Martin started looking at the back yeah, end yeah, and then yeah. someone else started talking to Kevin Brennan and now it's like we're trying to find out who's behind it and yeah. that conspiracy are the same people yelling at me about fucking COVID. It is so goddamn funny how people, again, same <laughs> tactics, different intentions, that both sides think they're good. It, it's... I don't know, dude. I'm taking a Carlin approach to it all, and uh, this is all a show. And uh, I'm sitting back. I got popcorn. I got a little bit of weed. Yeah, and like uh, I'm just Carlin said I'm uh, not in it no more. I'm watching. I'm watching. Yeah. I'm a spectator. Carlin yes. said I'm a spectator. He yeah, I have. I have no woman. I have no kids. My parents don't talk to me that much. I'm pretty much me. So it's <laughs> like, you know, I, I I I don't have really that much invested. And I don't care if I, if I die, to be honest with you. Like, this has been great. It's been, I, I've heard some cool songs. I've seen some cool movies. I've met some great people. But, like, dude, if I went, like, we, you know, everyone wants to live longer. What the fuck are we living for, Pudge? iPhone 13? Tiger King the movie? No. Like, are we going to see Utopia? Come on, man. Like, it's okay if I go. It's okay. I, if I get to hang out till I'm 90, dope. But if I don't. It's cool. That's the whole thing about, like, shootings and, and this fucking virus. There's so many people trying to avoid death that they're fucking avoiding living life. And it's just like, dude, if, if, if you didn't, if you fucking lived your life instead of being in a cage of your job and your fucking things and whatever else, then maybe if you died a little bit before you thought you were going to be, it wouldn't be a sad thing because you fucking did the best you could while you were stuck in this place. You're scared of dying because you haven't lived. No, there isn't a Yelp review. <laughs> Imagine if there was a Yelp review wow. for death. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where it'd be like, hey, five stars. First, no one else is here. And then, like, years later, it'd be like, three stars. There's no Wi-Fi. And then, like, years later, it'd be like, one star. Wear your mask. You know? <laughs> I, 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 I love your slant, man. I, I totally love your slant. Like, yeah, like I can't I wait at, to get on stage, dude. Oh, I, swear to God, I can't wait. It's like I said at the top of the show. I, when I first started comedy, I'm an open micer. I see you on stage, and I'm like, this motherfucker is different. I like this guy, and you haven't changed as far as your essence. And Appreciate I love it, that. I've always been a fan. I've always been a fan. And it's like, you're like nobody fucking else, man. You're like nobody Appreciate else. It, dude. Don't yeah, I feel like I've grown change. up a little bit. You know, but other than that, yeah, I'm pretty I much mean, like uh, I'm the same. Yeah, yeah, you're the same. <laughs> I just I you remember know? you from the mics, man. New York Comedy Club. I think you used to cover for Alan Schwartz every now and then or uh, whatever. Yeah, uh, Boston and- Comedy Club, dude. There, there's there's a mic that I wish people could see nowadays because that was such a literal gym workout because a there was regulars in a sense, but it was like, you couldn't do the same jokes that you did the week before. Otherwise people thought you're fucking lazy. Like remember with like mad dog, dude, uh, what Andy Picaro, Ed Murray, fucking John Clark, Alan Schwartz, Jen Metasio hosted. But like, dude, those people, and I'm missing so many others, forgive me, but like, you know, my memory's a little shot, but like, Dude, that was really – and then you would talk after. Like, I, I, on those 
that Boston day, there was, I think, five or six places that you could get up between Greenwich and the East Village. And it was basically just walking down McDougal yeah. over to, like, Great Jones Street into – I can't remember what it turns into. It's not third, but um, whatever else. But, like – yeah. And then talking in between about, like, hey, dude, you know, two mics ago you did this line like that, and that was a lot funnier than what you fucking did here. And then, hey, you should try it like this and add that act out. And, like, and then you would go do that stuff in the next one. And it's like, by the end of the night, dude, we literally had – and to some people this will sound ridiculous, but we had literally – and this is a lot – two minutes of new shit. Yeah. On a Tuesday night. Two minutes. And, dude, again, to non-coms, they might be like two minutes. Ago. To comics, having two minutes with, like, a good fucking, what, uh, ten laughs? Nine laughs? And that you created within one or two days. That were, yes. you know what I'm saying? Within, yeah. 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 What year did you yeah. start? What year did you start? Because I started in 15 when I first, I remember hit going to the 2000, not oh, excuse me, 05. Oh five, oh five. Oh, yeah. okay. I was gonna say I'm like way before that. No, oh five. Um, I got it. See again, I'm fuzzy. Uh, it's either it's either oh four or oh five. Okay, because when I was in, I started oh five. Like I November, remember. November of oh four, oh five. I want to say oh four, probably. It had to be oh four because I started in October of oh five, and I remember the New York mics. I used to go there on Mondays and Thursdays, and I see you. Okay. And then so shortly 04. after, and then shortly after that. Uh, the, the world, the world, uh, yeah, opened up. And but again, what an amazing opportunity that was at that time, dude. It, there was I no you, one else barking. We made yeah. five bucks a head. Granted, yeah. it wasn't easy to get people to come in, but right. there was no other competition. We got how much stage time? We got to hang out with like some fucking mid-level kind of headlining, yeah. Yeah. you know, like, dude, someone like a Pat Dixon. A Keith Alberstadt back in the day to Giannis be able to Pappas. fucking Giannis Nate, Pappas. yeah, Giannis Pappas, Jesus Christ, Nate Bergatzi, dude. Yeah, and we yeah. got to fucking talk with them, and sometimes dude, they even got to catch our acts and maybe give like a, a hey you ever or I or even just a thumbs up. Yeah, like oh, yeah. dude, that that we were again. I'll say it on air, whatever. You don't have to. Aaron Hammer's a fucking cunt, but. The, those people that were there, again, another amazing Mike Drucker, who is probably a dude a lot of people don't know, but this kid's probably got five fucking Emmys. He's, He's a probably writer. lost ten. He's a writer. Huh? He, he, yeah, he, dude. He, yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I know. I remember yeah. the, I remember because I'm going back to you in the beginning when I said you're one of the nicest guys to me. When the world opened up, I think you were part of the first or second wave Second wave. War. You were the okay. You were the second wave. I was still in the open mics. I was green, and I was just trying to, you know, find whatever, be funny. And I bumped into you, and you told me, "Hey, Pudge, you should do the world." You just say, hey, "Pudge, you should do the world," and I was like, mind blown. You think I'm good enough to do the world? You think I'm good enough to do that? And I'm like, I was just, and I went to an idea. I auditioned. I remember. I was I was the last audition in class because like it was like okay. I remember it was like he had an audition like three yes. like I don't know what I was, I was definitely the last class because after that he didn't care about auditioning he just took anybody who could bring people but I was, yes. the, yeah, I was yeah. the last audition in class and I got in and I did six months and I don't regret it a lot of stage time learned a lot grew a lot hung out with great people uh, yeah definitely a big part of my uh, coming up. Yeah, and, and to be honest with you, dude, it wasn't about like, oh, I thought you were good enough. I just knew that you would be a person that would take advantage of, of the opportunity that the world had to offer at that time. Yeah. You yeah, know what I, I mean? Did. Like, you, it, 100% you did. I you know what I, I mean? I, I just knew like, yeah, dude, you're fucking green, whatever. But it's like, you know, you got, there, there's, there's a work ethic and so forth and a determination and a passion that, like, you're going to overcome that shit. You know, you're yep. going to stand out there in the rain and fucking, hey, you want to see a comedy show and yeah, have people uh, fucking yeah, there, say there stupid was, stuff. Dude, that they think they're nice, so smart. There was some nice I like, I like sit-down comedy. Yeah. 
there were some nights in Times Square. I know you felt them, man. It was like the loneliest place in the world. It was absolutely the. I mean, and that's where the sacrifice, and that's where the heartache. But we, we, you know, we, we push forward. We push, and I don't regret it. I don't regret it. And I love, I love. It was six months, and I enjoyed it. I took advantage. I love, I love the ba changing the batting order. I don't know. He had a batter. He always like nine or ten comics per show, and I love being first. I love being last. I love going up after the, the, the big guns, like a Giannis Papas, going after Bro. one of the headliners. I love, I love, I think I want to, I want to conquer every, you know what I'm saying? Because I looked at it like a baseball batting order. And I wanted, to, I wanted to hit in every position. Some people were fucking scared and I don't want to do this. I don't want to go first. I don't want to go after the headliner. How the, get the fuck out of here. That's how we get better. And I just, I love that opportunity. So yeah, it was a good six month bid. It, it was a lot of work. Times Square. Uh, hustling and grinding, five bucks a head. It, it, it helped out. You know that was beer money back in the day. Beer. No, and I was homeless, and one night uh, I made a hundred bucks because the night before I was fucking miserable in front of the MTV building, just being like, "I see a comedy show." No one's fucking talking yeah. to me, dude. See? And yeah. my body language is even becoming more yeah. like "fuck you." And yeah. then this dude just <laughs> comes up to me. He just comes up to me. He goes, "Hey, can I get one of those?" I go, "Yeah, sure." And then the next night I had off, and I'm just roaming around the streets, and Alex Grubard called me. He's like, yo, dude, some guy just brought 20 people, dude. You just made 100 bucks. I was like, that no was shit, it? dude. Wow. That got me food. That got, that paid my phone bill for the month. Like, yeah, dude. That was, uh, that was a fascinating time, man. Yeah. yeah I was homeless was during the world. And, um, oh, God, dude, barking in Times Square. All yeah. of it. All of yeah. it that you said, dude. But, yeah, again. You know, um, you know, it, it, and also, you know, I say Haber's a cunt, and, you know, he is. But, like, uh, I got to host those midnight shows. He let oh, me yeah. do those a lot, and that became a fucking – dude, people loved me hosting the midnights on, like, a Friday, Saturday. It was fucking great. Comics would be in the back of the room. And that was the thing, too, that I don't know what's happened. Uh, I don't hang around clubs a lot, lot anymore. I try to do my own shit. But, like – the, the back of the room, you know, like one thing about the world, dude, you know, if you were like doing good or if you were hot or if you were having like a hitting streak, quote unquote, keep the baseball yeah. references going. Right. Uh, it's like the, the, all the comics would be yeah, in the said, back of the room, yeah, yeah, you I know, the and then it's run. like, well, I, I, I'm supposed to go bark, but y'all, I got to go check out Warner. I'll be right back. Like it yeah. was fucking that, yeah, yeah. that. Oh, that's the beauty, man. I'll tell you what, yeah, and I got my first hosting opportunity at the World. I did. He let me host a couple of times. That's where I got my feet wet. And then yep. I started, Then I, that's how I got started hosting bar shows. So a lot yeah. out of it, a lot out of it. Hey, a I, lot you, kinda, out of it. you ended up doing a lot with uh, the Laugh Lounge while it was open. Yeah, 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 I did something. Hot Part Sunday was my first show at there. That's why I got the name. So, Fucking yeah, brilliant. it all it'll, it'll moved, it'll move. and hopefully uh, – Things are going to move now. It's going to be another big move, another shake. Another, yeah. oh, shit. Yo, Tim, we hit the marker. You were right. We hit the marker. I got 20 seconds. Okay. okay. Yo, shout out your podcast real quick. Uh, Joker in the Rye, Patreon, I am Tim Warner. Everything is IamTimWarner.com. Yo, God bless you, bro. Thank you for coming Thank on. Thank you. I this has been a great talk, dude. I love you. Love you. Respect you. I'll see you in the future, man. Peace out. Yeah, man. Thank you.